Welcome to the Mindful Healers Podcast with Dr. Jesse Mahoney and Dr. Ni Cheng Lang. We are here to help you learn to pause and be present, awaken your breath, and harness the ripple effects of mindfulness for radiant health. We get you. We know you. We are you. We have both been successful on the surface, yet struggling underneath. We have both had cluttered brains, been overwhelmed, and exhausted. We're healers who have found solutions and want to share them with you. Join us here to discover a better way. Welcome to the Mindful Healers podcast. Today's episode is Everybody Needs a Friend. This is a second episode focused on changing your relationship with your body. I highly recommend a re-listen to the first episode podcast on changing your relationship with your body from a year ago. It was also a solo cast by yours truly, as today will also be. Today's podcast is going to be a follow-up of that podcast, and I will go deeper, bringing in both recent podcasts about loving amusement and why it's hard to make friends, episodes that we've shared a few weeks ago. And I am sharing this podcast also with the intention of encouraging those of you who struggle with body image to join me for yoga. You can um, sign up on my webpage to join me live. I teach most Saturdays at nine. You can also um, sign up to be on my email list and get the recorded classes. I do a lot of work on body image in my yoga classes from a nurturing, loving, nourishing, and kind space. And yoga is a beautiful way to change how you view yourself and your body. And my intention in my classes, my intention in my coaching, and my intention on my retreats, and my intention with this podcast is to Lighten the heaviness of self-criticism and the challenges that many of us have with self-compassion and self-love and body image. And I love to bring in humor and kindness. And that is where the idea of loving amusement comes up often, as well as tools like hand to heart. And so today's podcast is an invitation, a strong invitation to join me for yoga, where we practice doing this work in a space where your body and your nervous system are calm and more receptive. And when we practice um, these thoughts and these mindset shifts in a space where your body is calm, the shifts are happen much more easily. They don't take willpower. And for those of you who've been struggling with these issues for a very long time, this approach changes everything. It is one of the reasons why I so strongly encourage people to join me for retreats at a Sagrada as well, because when we practice yoga twice a day and we spend time in nature with a calm, peaceful nervous system where our parasympathetic nervous system is working better, we are much better able to address some of these long-term challenges with body image and the way that we talk to ourselves and think about ourselves. So with that introduction, we will be talking about this concept of every body needs a friend. So my intention with today's episode is to lighten what is a ubiquitous struggle with body image and self-criticism for almost all women that I know. My intention is to encourage you all to apply loving amusement to your thoughts about yourself and your body, the ones that you have right now, to lighten the heaviness of the self-criticism and the challenges that you've had with this topic over your lifetime, and to practice bringing in humor and kindness. I hope that you will discover that you don't need to change how you look. What you need to change is how you see. I also want you to bring in a concept that the camera lies. The takeaways from today's episode are that everybody truly does need a friend and that neutral is amazing and can be a huge win. 
So I wanted to start by sharing a reflection from one of my new favorite books, I Wish I Knew, by Donna Ashworth. It's called The Camera Lies. If you have ever been frustrated trying to photograph the beauty of a moon or a sunrise, then you will know that a snapshot is a mere recreation of what the human eye sees. It can't do justice to the beauty we behold. The same goes for you. Your beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If you see a photo of you that doesn't look like how you feel you look, that's exactly what's happening. Your beauty cannot be captured by a camera or a filter. It's in the energy, the magic, and the light you send out. And it's all yours and is still there regardless of what the snapshot shows. The camera lies, or maybe it just can't quite comprehend how much you really are. So that poem for me strikes a chord. I have spent much of my life disliking photos of myself, and I have done a lot of work over the last few years learning to take photos that I do like and noticing that when other people see us differently, we can learn from their view of ourselves. And so many of you may know from my Pause and Presence website and through working with me through yoga, there are actually quite a few photos of me taken in the last few years. And they are almost all taken by my delightful dear husband, who is not a professional photographer. But what I have noticed is that he sees me in a different light. And so it isn't about the camera. It's about the way that you see. And so when someone is taking a photo of you, they can see you in a different light than you see yourself. And sometimes they're able to capture the beauty inherent in you that you aren't able to see. And then sometimes it isn't capturable. And so sometimes he'll have taken photos and I won't like any of them. And the invitation of this poem that I just shared is the idea that we often take photos and I'm reminded of the golden light meditations at um, Sagrada and when we're walking back at sunset. And so often we're all trying to capture a photo in the moment and we can't capture it. And it's because there is something about being in the moment that is not capturable. And so sometimes we miss the moment by taking the photos. I actually find that pausing to take the photos allows me to pause and see and appreciate. But what I do notice is that the photo often isn't able to capture ourselves. And so to notice that we often may not be able to capture our own beauty and that it isn't so much in what is there, it is what we see. And so it's this idea that you don't need to change how you look. You need to change how you see. And that is a tremendous gift in the way that we look at ourselves. And so I work with many, many women as a coach who are mean to themselves. And many people feel terrible when they hear that they're mean to themselves. And then they realize that they say mean things to themselves all the time. In fact, I had a new client last week who was saying she had shared this with her husband, and he is now pointing out to her all the ways in which she is mean to herself. And as she's trying to be kind specifically and telling him that, he's like, nope, that's mean too. Nope, that's mean too. And I will say that I, early on in my coaching, went through the exact same thing. And so I often say to just stop being mean um, or stop being unkind and perhaps to commit to doing no harm. And that if we were not to be friends with our bodies and ourselves, that that actually does harm. And so I also want to gift you up front that the fact that we think this way is not our fault. Society trains us to think this way. We were trained along the way to be mean to ourselves, to push ourselves and to work harder and to try to look differently and be better and um, meet some metric of the way that we are supposed to look. Measuring your worth with a dress size, as someone quoted, is like asking the sun to sing. And so realizing that a lot of the blame, shame, and guilt around how we look comes um, from society. And that when we feel that blame, shame, and guilt, we release cortisol and norepinephrine, we block our amygdala, and we get stuck. And so, of course, we're stuck in this spot 
of um, blame, shame, guilt, dislike, et cetera. And then we have society continuing to layer on. We have cameras that can't capture it. But being a friend to ourself is a possibility. And I just love this idea of everybody needing a friend. And I don't, I want to be clear, this wasn't my idea. I have an amazing book that I love called 52 Ways to Love Your Body that I found when I was on a retreat at Esalen many years ago. And this is a chapter in it. And I just want to offer, why wouldn't you be friends with your body? Why not being a friend and be, being a friend to yourself? You and your body are on this journey for the long haul and choosing to not be a friend is a little bit like that mean girl spirit, but it's also perhaps just a habit. Being a friend is not complacent or lazy. It's a performance tool and being kind to yourself similarly. And so could this idea of being a friend be a gateway to self-compassion and not being mean to yourself. And so if you were a friend of your body, if you were on the same team, how would you approach how you look and how your body functions? How could you be a great teammate or a great friend to your physical body? Could you appreciate things that it has done for you? Our bodies are actually pretty awesome. In fact, they do amazing things. And so how interesting, um, notice the curiosity lens that we often talk about in this podcast that we focus on the negative. And so a place to start for those of you who have struggled with this is to focus on the functionality of your body. Um, many of us, especially as physicians, we can connect with our heart space by thinking about the functionality of the heart connecting with the um, PMI or the point of maximal impact. And I had a client tell me that when she does hand to heart, she, what she found most effective was connecting to the point of maximal impact. And when she did that, um, it helped her not feel alone. And so could you thank your heart for its service. Thank it for beating all the ways in which it does. Thank it for feeding itself. Thank it for taking care of you even when you're sleeping. Thank it for loving your children. Thank it for letting you exercise and climb mountains and do all of the physical things that you've done. Same thing perhaps with your gut or your feet or your arms or your legs. And so, especially if you have a body part that maybe you dislike, can you thank it? So for me, thanking my belly for caring children and thanking the stretch marks for making room for them to grow is helpful. I used to only see it as kind of a thick waist or a thick middle. And so changing the framing. <clears throat> the other story I'll tell, which is funny, is I have a um, favorite dress shop that many people um, know about that I love to shop at. And I get most of my yoga clothes and regular clothes there. And anyone who um, wants to know, you can reach out and I'll give you a special link to shop there. And both you and I get a benefit because apparently I'm one of their best customers. But when I was there recently trying on something, I said, well, that dress isn't going to work for me because I don't have a waist, which is a thought that I have carried around with me forever. And the woman who was helping me said, oh, no, you have a waist. It's just in a different spot than you think it is. And so all of a sudden, complete mindset shift. And that is a way of being friends to your body. Um, I was not being a good friend by thinking that I don't have a waist, but she was a good friend to my body. And she's like, no, no, you have a waist. It's just higher than you think it is. And she adjusted the tie. And all of a sudden, the outfit looked amazing. And so, yes, perhaps she's a good salesman, saleswoman, but also when you become friends with your body and you do not accept that you don't have this thing or it doesn't function properly, a friend would notice where it is, how it works. They look at it in a different light. They show up more curious. And so I think it really helps when you don't change the way you look, you change the way you see. It's beautiful. And so I wanted to move past this idea of thanking your body for where you've been together and what you've done together, and perhaps even choosing to be a friend so that you can do 
more functional things together to this idea of changing the way that you see. And so Donna Ashworth has another poem in the same book, I Wish I Knew. Apparently, I should be on her promotion team as well. <laughs> she says, the only change you need. Your body has been changing since the day you were born, and it will continue to change until the day you die. Fighting that change is a lifelong battle, which will bring you much misery and sorrow. If you can accept your body early in this journey of life, you will see it thrive. You will automatically look after it, and you will save yourself a world of pain, metaphorically and literally. You are not a fashion trend or a mannequin. You are a human made of flesh and bones and heart, and you are pretty awesome just the way you are. Don't change the way you look. Change the way you see. It's the only adjustment you will ever need. And so this is a poem that I shared in yoga a few weeks ago. And noticing that when we change the way we see, we change the way we feel. And if we see our body as a friend, all of a sudden, everything looks different. And so my invitation here is also to apply that concept of loving amusement to yourself, putting on perhaps what I'm going to call loving amusement glasses. It's a gateway out of the shame, blame, and guilt and the struggle. It gets around conflict and it's using this superpower of humor to see yourself as a friend. And so perhaps you can apply it to this idea of, of course, which has come up many times recently. Of course, you're frustrated with yourself for eating a bowl of Cheerios post-call. Of course, you ate a bowl of Cheerios post-call. Of course, you have been being mean to yourself for all these years. And so I just love this idea of, of course, a good friend would just say that, right? As um, I had a client who mentioned to me that she had eaten a bowl of Cheerios post-call and was mad at herself. And my immediate thought well, as a friend and as a coach was, of course you did. That's what we do post-call because we're tired and we don't have any willpower and we do things that feel comforting. And many of us ate Cheerios as kids. And so rather than being a poor friend and criticizing yourself, be a friend, of course, is a very friendly um, approach to yourself. The next um, tool in being a good friend to your body is approving of yourself. And this is a tool that I mentioned in the most recent podcast on um, what I learned in master coach training. And this is a way of not just um, not being mean to yourself, but embracing who you are. And friends approve of you. Friends see the good in you. Friends approach you with kindness and love and laughter. And what I want to offer is that you can approve of yourself as a friend. Like you can be your own body's friend and you can issue approval just like a friend would. And so could you approve of yourself? What body parts of yours could you issue approval for? And I mentioned this in the Change the Relationship with Your Body podcast, but could you approve of your toes? Or could you approve of your laugh lines? Or could you approve of your gray hair? Or could you approve of your earlobes that house beautiful earrings? I had a client who found that the most easily accessible thing to approve of. I very intentionally approve of my neck. I have a nice neckline and necklaces look good. And so I take time to approve of my neck. That is what a friend to my body would do. I also approve of my toes. And so as a yoga teacher, I see my toes often and I always think and very consciously approve of them. And so what body parts can you approve of? What can you approve that of your body for doing well today? you and your body. And then friends also even go beyond approving of you. And they often value you. They think you did something great. They celebrate you. Your friend, if you were a friend to your body, you would think it looked good. And so this is where bringing in the poem about the camera lies. Like what if you are too much for the camera to capture, just like the sunset is too beautiful for the camera to capture. We often say that in nature, like it's so beautiful that the camera just doesn't even capture the light and the sparkle on the water. Um, 
And so I want to offer that it's possible that you are too beautiful to capture. And so when you look in a mirror and you criticize yourself, or you look at a photo and you criticize yourself, can you go to this idea of the camera lies? To me, this is just a fun, lovingly amused way to think about some of these body image issues. And again, I know that body image is fairly triggering for many people, but when we bring in humor and we bring in loving amusement, so just like a mother relationship could be super triggering or an ex-spouse could be super triggering or um, a mother-in-law could be super triggering or a colleague could be super triggering, your body can be super triggering. And so that when we can approach some of these super triggering, super challenging things with loving amusement and like the camera lies, then all of a sudden we can make inroads in places that we didn't think were possible. And so for me, this poem about the camera lying and not being able to capture the beauty as it was is just a eye-opening wow phenomenon. My brain believes it. And so that's the power of coaching and changing your mindset is when you find a sentence that you really believe, you can bring it to an issue that has been really tricky for you to move through. And so I offer that tonight. From here, I want to offer this idea of integration and practice. And that you and I and most women have been spent most of their lives thinking not positive body image thoughts, thinking negative thoughts about ourselves and about what we need to improve. We have not been approving. And so I offer the idea of integration and practice and letting these thoughts and ideas take root and letting them seep into the nooks and crannies of your body and your cells. And looping back to what I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast is that this happens much more easily when we are relaxed and our parasympathetic nervous system is activated. We cannot change these thoughts when we are feeling stressed, judgmental, or in fight or flight, or sympathomimetic storm, or when we have shame, blame, and guilt, um, releasing cortisol and norepinephrine. And so this is a huge reason why I teach yoga and why I encourage all of my coaching clients to practice yoga with me and why I offer retreats in the way that I do and why I work with all of my coaching clients on infusing practical mindfulness, mindfulness for everyone. I don't think that anyone needs to sit on a mat for 45 minutes necessarily to get benefit. But when we are relaxed and when we find ways to activate our parasympathetic nervous system and approach ourselves with kindness and compassion and friendship, that is when shifts occur. And so this idea that everybody needs a friend because friendship is kind and friendship evokes laughter and parasympathetic vibes and love and um yoga is really about community and connection, that that is the superpower crack that lets the light in on this body image issue. And that is what I'm offering today. So if you could decide that you were going to befriend your body, perhaps as a new friend, and just little by little decide to send friendly thoughts her way, and treat her as you might a new friend, one you're getting to know. How can you notice what is going well rather than what's not going well? And being kind to yourself and seeing what happens. Some reflection questions. Are you willing to stop constantly trying to change yourself and be unkind to yourself and stop changing yourself and instead change how you see? How might neutral be an amazing feeling to have about your body? What if the camera lies? What do you need to approve of yourself for? What would treating yourself and your struggles and your weaknesses and your body with loving amusement look like? As I wind down this pipe, podcast, a reminder to re-listen to a few of the oldies but goodies. 
the Loving Amusement podcast, which is quite recent, the Change Your Relationship podcast, which is from March uh, 2022. Perhaps re-listen to why it's hard to make friends, because for those of us who struggle with friendships, it's also hard to make friends with ourselves, our high expectations, our time scarcity, our compare and despair get in the same get in the way in the same way that they do when we are trying to make friends. Negativity bias, catastrophizing, fear of rejection, perfectionism, people pleasing, all of those same thoughts get in the way of befriending our body. And a final invitation as we end, why not be a friend to yourself? Stay on after the singing bowl for our mindful moment. And please consider joining me for mindful yoga on Saturdays. Get on the list to get the recordings. Join me at Sagrada to work on this body image issue and become a friend to your body once and for all. Integrate it into all the nooks and crannies. And join me for coaching. This podcast topic came up because of several coaching clients who brought this issue to their coaching sessions. It's something that comes up in ongoing presence with some regularity. It's something that comes up in one-on-one coaching. And it is possible to change these long-held struggles. And a final word to share is that when you change it, you model a different way of treating yourself. And if you happen to have a daughter or even a son, when we change how we think about ourselves, our children are watching and the pediatrician in me wishes so hard that our children and the next generation won't have some of these same issues. And this work, when you do it for yourself, is such a gift to the next generation. Thanks so much for listening. Please, if you enjoy the Mindful Healers podcast, please leave us a written review. Please leave us five stars. This is what helps others find us. And please, 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 with intention, share this podcast with anyone you know who you think might enjoy it and benefit from our words. We put a lot of effort and time into creating these podcasts, and we would love nothing more than to reach more people and change more lives for the better, and so that everybody will ultimately have a friend. As always, if you want to declutter your mind, be more present, and start truly living your one wild and precious life, come find us at the mindfulhealerspodcast.com. Work with one of us. Work with both of us. Start or up-level your mindfulness practice. Discover how mindful coaching can change your life. Or even better, do both as part of our Mindful Healers programs and retreats. You can find links to find out more about our programs and join our communities at themindfulhealerspodcast.com. Reach out and get started on your journey to a life better lived today. The content of this podcast is not meant to be medical or life advice. If you choose to participate in our mindful moments, please do so safely. Welcome to today's mindful moment. Today's mindful moment is going to be a moment of being a friend to yourself. And I invite you to think about yourself as a child. Perhaps go back to a memory of a photo, a photo of yourself where you were doing something funny or you liked yourself and bring that photo to mind. And while you are thinking, find a comfortable seat once again and connect to the earth with what parts of you connect most fully and easily, either soles of your feet or sit bones, noticing what part of you feels the most safe and the most comfortable and connect that into the stability of the earth below and tilt your pelvis forward and stack your spine heart light and open 
and taking in a moment to drink in the breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And close your eyes if that's comfortable and envision that photo of yourself as a child, the one you like, the one that makes you smile a little bit and think about her. Could you treat her well? Could you treat her kindly? What if you and she were a friend? Would you say mean things to her? Taking in an inhale in through your nose and out through your mouth. And I invite you to bring your hands to heart if that would feel good. Pressing into the heart space with the heel of your hand and noticing the palm of the top hand atop the dorsum of the bottom hand. And just enjoy for a moment. Appreciate your heart and what it's doing for you. And noticing if you have any tightness or resistance to this idea of being a friend. And reconnect back to that version of you as a child. You and she are on that journey together. She is you. Bring her with you as a kind friend and realize that 30, 40 years from now, you'll be looking back at yourself now with that same kind voice. And what if, just what if you and your body could be on the same team? What might you do differently? What would be loving? If you were good friends, what would you do next? Noticing that when we ask that question about friendship, we come from our highest and wisest self. Taking in a drink of breath once, once again of this idea of friendship. The long, smooth exhale, let it out. And pause and enjoy. Taking a moment to think about what a good friend would do. How would a good friend suggest you take care of yourself? What advice would you give to that photo of your younger self? What advice would she give you? And envision that person with exactly the way she's standing, what you think she's thinking and feeling. She is a good friend to you, and you are a good friend to her because you and she are the same. Sometimes when we step out of being ourselves, we can tap into this kindness and sense of friendship. And so why not choose to be a good friend to yourself? Taking in a deep breath of love and kindness. A huge exhale, enjoy. Pause for a moment. And setting an intention for one thing that you will do in this week ahead to be a better friend to yourself. Because after all, everybody needs a friend. You can lower your hands and open your eyes. Take a moment to let the light in. And notice if you feel different with your eyes open. Does that idea of being a friend to yourself feel more or less accessible? And if you have access to that photo of you, can you put it somewhere to remind yourself about being a good friend? Have a beautiful week.